the food to high intensity radiation without risking destruction of the containers. Test items include sterilized foods packaged in cartons, metal and glass. All will be exposed according to plan to give us the most information. The night of the actual explosion, or rather early in the morning, finally came. On Media Hill, television equipment was positioned. Reporters, commentators, military and civil defense observers all had one purpose, to study the results of this explosion. At a position a mile forward from Media Hill, the Civil Defense Field Exercise Group had assembled with their equipment. A small group of Civil Defense volunteers were to occupy a trench relatively close to Ground Zero. On Media Hill, where I remained, there was hot coffee, last-minute briefings, and more waiting. Minus one minute. Put on your goggles. Observers without goggles must face away from the blast. On the silent desert, the test objects waited. H minus ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. Twenty-four hours elapsed before we were permitted to view at first hand the results of the explosion. This is what remained of the masonry house that was not reinforced. This is the house constructed of reinforced concrete blocks after the explosion. Although the redesigned two-story frame house was severely damaged, the structural improvements had strengthened its resistance considerably. The basement shelter had offered some degree of protection. The reinforced bathroom shelter was standing intact beneath the ruins of the house, so this type also offered some degree of protection. The upper section of one unguide radio tower collapsed from the tremendous force of the blast. The guide tower was slightly twisted by a power pole which fell across one of the guy wires. Within the concrete radio house, equipment had been shaken up. But as soon as power was restored, the transmitter resumed broadcasting. The 18,000 gallon tank of liquefied petroleum gas was undamaged. The connections were intact. The weighing and storage house was scattered across the desert, but the consumer sized tanks were unharmed. Power lines and transformers suffered some damage, but most of the power poles were still standing or could be repaired. The power substation was not seriously harmed. Edison Institute experts tested all lines and found the station to be operative. The food and cases of canned goods were taken away for laboratory tests. A tattoo mark was left beneath the dark pattern of this dress. The blast charred and faded the outer layer of this dark suit. 
During all this activity, the mass feeding group had been improvising to feed the test observers. These cans could have been salvaged from demolished buildings and used for preparing meat. As I watched the people eating, I realized that mass feeding would be an important job for civil defense. I took a last look at the debris and devastation. This time, it was only a test, a well-planned test, not a real attack. It was a test of the things we use in everyday life. Multi-megaton weapons would result in much greater damage over a larger area. But many lessons were learned from this test that have affected civil defense planning. All these factors must be considered as we plan for the survival of our homes, our families, and our nation in the nuclear age. Thank you.